Before we get into the topic, if you guys are interested in fitness, lifestyle, software engineering, or tech in general, please All right, we're going to get right into it. So I've been planning on making this video for a very long time now. Um, every time I say I'm going to do it, I just forget about it or just kind of push it off. So today we're going to do it. No excuses. is happening. So we're going to do a software engineering Q&A. Um, I posted on Reddit and asked for a bunch of questions to, an to answer on this video. I also posted on Instagram and I have some questions that I get asked all the time. So I'm going to answer those as well. So starting with Reddit, going straight into it. After landing internship, what should be done during and after said internship to ensure a full-time position after graduation? All right, I really like this question. Um, I have talked about this at Clemson University before. So I was an intern at Amazon. I interned last summer, three-month internship, got the return offer, and was able to move it to my city of choice. So... What you got to realize is that the company that's hiring you as an intern, they want to hire you on full time at the end of the summer. You know, they're not going to waste their time and effort and money just for somebody, just to turn somebody away. So what you got to think about is, is basically a three month long interview. And during this interview or during this internship, they're going to probably give you a, a long project to do with smaller subtasks and stuff like that. But don't focus so much on finishing the project to completion. A lot of the time, they wanna see your, your process, your development process, how you go about planning out your project, where do you go when you have questions, and stuff like that. So my advice is to really focus on the process. Get all the information you need at the beginning. Ask any question, doesn't matter if, it's, if you think it's stupid or not. A lot of times um, you may think it's stupid, but it's actually extremely important to the project. So use your coworkers, use your manager. Them, they are there to help you. You know, sometimes we get in this thing where everybody's on their own, on their own goal, but you're on a team for a reason. You guys need to help each other get to a certain goal or get to a certain task. So, so basically the company wants to see how you approach the problem and how you handle adversity because that is a big part of the job that will happen multiple times. You'll get stuck on something for days and they really want to see how you would overcome that. Of course, you know, actually doing the project and making as much progress as you can is going to be extremely helpful, but it really isn't always the main goal. As long as you can show that you're putting an effort into learning all of their software, learning all of their systems, their processes, anything like that and show that you actually know some computer science and you know, you can actually code a little bit, um, you'll be good. So I know it's super high pressure. A lot of people think that, you know, they need to develop all this whole new system while they're an intern, you know, develop this top notch product, but that's not really the case. Most more than likely you'd be working on a really small project in the company that may or may not even get used. So don't overthink it, do your best and you'll be fine. Next question. What was your interview prep process? Okay, this was an interesting process, but at first I'll go over the general process for software engineering interviews. Um, a lot of people tell you just to spam leak code, do leak code every day, all day, never stop, you know, but that's not really the case. Yes, that will help you a lot. Um, a lot of questions that you will be asked in the interview will be on leak code already. So. Yes, I would say do a fair amount of leak code, but don't get obsessed with it. There's a lot of people who think that, you know, that's the only way to get a job. And that's not exactly true. You also need to brush up and study some personality questions because a lot of time you had this brilliant software engineer who can solve any software engineering problem, but can't, can't pass a simple interview or a simple personality question. And that's kind of a red flag because that shows that, you know, you're, you're just kind of one dimensional. You don't want just to be a coder. If you're going for a software engineering at a fame company or really any top tech company, they want to see you have balance that yes, you are a great software engineer. You know how to code, but you can also have a conversation. You can also answer a personality question and not kind of freeze up or 
you can actually answer it based on your own life experiences. So I did practice doing some whiteboarding questions and I'll probably make a video about that as well, kind of going over my process and how I approach that. But again, don't overthink it. Just work on your problems, uh, your data structures, algorithms, all that stuff, and you'll be fine. So going more into like the Amazon focused interview prep, they have these things called leadership principles. And if you are interested in getting a job at Amazon, I highly recommend you look them up, study them, know them. So for me, I knew how important they were to the company. And so what I did is I took each principle and wrote out one or two cases where I have displayed this characteristic, either in school, in work, or just in general life. Um, so yeah, I did that. It took about 10 full pages, but you know, I spent a whole night doing that. And then I kind of reread them right before the second round interviews, which is a personal one. It just so happened that the interviewer asked me about two, I think it was like two or three of them. And I was able to give them a really good answer because, you know, I've already written the answer a few days ago. So that was kind of my interview prep. Um, I knew how important the principles were and I studied them, wrote about them and all of that. And then along with the uh, live coding test, I practiced by solving some data structure and algorithm problems. But there are plenty of videos on YouTube. But if anybody wants to me to make a video about that, kind of uh, about my experience and how I would approach it, um, just leave a like and comment down below. So the next question, how long do you anticipate staying at said company? What are your plans afterwards? So they're referring to Amazon. Um, so in the software engineering field, a lot of people bounce around really quickly. Uh, usually spend two to four years at one company and then you know go chase the next offer. Um, so far, I mean, I've kind of done that already. So I started out in AWS uh, seven months, and then I switched teams to now a front uh, to a front end engineer position. So, so I can't really give an answer because I don't know what the future holds. But I'm very comfortable right now with Amazon and their opportunity for growth. So I spent the first seven months here at Amazon uh, on an AWS team doing back end work. And then I let them know that you know, I really want to do front end work. I don't really want to do back end work. And I was able to find a team within a month that needed a front end engineer. And I was able to switch you know, with no issue. My manager was, was totally fine with it. So Amazon has a lot of room for growth and a lot of different departments and smaller companies within the larger Amazon company. So I can really get any kind of experience that I want within Amazon. Um, I'm not saying that I'm going to be here forever. Uh, I'm definitely going to weigh any option that comes towards me, but right now um, I'm pretty set on Amazon. Yeah, they've treated me really well. Um, had a great internship experience and a great transition from college to actual full-time engineer. So yeah, I really respect them and hope to continue my career here. Next question. What were your grades and are they the reason you got the job? I can go ahead and tell you right now, no. My grades were by some people's standards, not very good. I was a straight C student. You know, I did what I could just to get a C, just to graduate, pass the class, and move on. Um, in my opinion, and in the opinion of a lot of recruiters that I've talked to, so your work experience is actually more important than your GPA. Um, yeah, like I said, I didn't have a very good GPA, but I was able to get a lot of experience because I really put myself out there and looked for opportunities. Uh, I was a, I was a web developer intern for Clemson for my pretty much my entire stay there. Um, I had internships prior to that, and you know, I was able to show the companies that yeah, I might not have the best GPA, but I have a lot of experience and I've shown a lot of results, and I can prove to you that I know what I'm talking about and I know how to work. So to them, that's really important. So let me give you an example. Let's say there's a student with a 4.0 and no work experience. You know, they spend all their time focusing on their grades, trying to get that A. And then you have another student who has maybe a C or B average, but has two years already of work experience or internship experience. The company is going to really focus more on that person with a lower GPA, but more work experience because your experience proves that you can accomplish a goal. You can put yourself out there and you can do, you know, in the science task. So that work experience shows that you have, you can function in the real world environment and not just the classroom. 
you have experience working on actual systems, you have experience working on an actual development team or whatever your internship team was, and you know that that is weighted a lot heavier than grades. I mean, that's not saying that, you know, you can just slack off and not pay attention and just try to pass. You know, you, you have to know what you're talking about. I know grades don't always affect, you know, the intelligence of the student. So don't let that fool you. But I mean, as long as you understand the concept, you know what you're doing, you're really trying your hardest in the classes, but you're also focusing on getting a lot more experience and working outside of class. Not because everybody has the same classwork. Um, what really sets you apart is what you do outside of the classroom. Not everybody's interning. Not everybody's out here getting, you know, project experience. So if you can get that on your resume, that's going to be way more important than your grades. Next question. Why are you making a Q&A video and who is asking for this video? This is a Reddit question. You know, Reddit people. Okay. Um, I am making this video because I get asked a lot of the same questions over and over, whether it be on social media or in person. So I figured that rather than just answering everybody on the same, rather than giving everybody the same answer and over and over again, I could point them to this video. And for a lot of, I know there's a lot of people who are interested in software engineering, interested in getting into a fame company. So this video will actually be really helpful to them. And then my channel in general will be mo uh, kind of focused on that. So now we're gonna go on to the Instagram questions. Someone asked, what is the hardest part of your current job? Okay. This is an easy one. Um, basically, the hardest part of the job and really any kind of new job and new developer job is learning all the internal information that you need to complete a task. Um, in your classes, you know, you're focused on one thing, you're given a rubric or something like that and you just follow that to a T and that was it. In the real world, you may be given just a concept or an idea that you need to create and work on and then you also got to figure out how that concept or idea is going to affect the other teams that are depending on you or the other team's systems that you're using. It's not just your own. You know, you can't just go make any change you want and not worry about if this is going to break someone else's system or seven other systems. So that's actually very important. And learning a lot about how the company works, the process of the company, the process of your team, how your team gets stuff done and how other teams get stuff done is really important. So at Amazon, the first day they told me your first year or so is going to be like drinking water out of a fire hose. And that is a hundred percent correct. You know, sometimes you're going to feel like you're taking on too much, you know, you're drowning in work, but you know, you can get through it. Everybody felt like that. You're not the only one. So basically the hardest part of the job is just figuring out what to do and how to do it the most efficient way. And that's going to be that's going to be the same for all new developers, um, but that you know, through that you become a better developer, and you know you move up in the rankings, and then you can help other people learn, and you can kind of create new processes that will make things more efficient, so people don't have to go through stuff that you went through. Next question: How do you code? I'm still trying to figure that out myself. All right, the next question is, which programming language is the best? So that's kind of a hard question to answer because everybody's gonna have their own opinion. Everybody's gonna have their own best or favorite language. So for me, the language that I use the most would be Java. So right now, that's my best language. That's the best language to accomplish my goal. So Amazon mostly uses Java. So the best language is whichever language you can use to best accomplish your goal or best fit in with your team. So let's say you're on a Java team, but you want to do something else. That might not be the best language for you to, or best choice because your team is going to have to do code reviews and you're going to have to review other people's code. And if you guys aren't working in the same language, it gets kind of confusing because what if one, one teammate doesn't know this language? That's one person who can't review your code and might not find a bug. But so there's really not a best language. There are languages that are better at certain things um, and have different use cases. But then again, that's really subjective. So if you really want to find out what the best languages are, search search a top, search what you want to work on. Like if you want to do web development or maybe you want to do backend development, search that and search the most used language there. And then you can kind of make your decision there. Last question on Instagram is, how can I get a job at a fang company if I'm just an average software engineer? 
Okay. I This happens actually a lot. Um, so for this question, I get this a lot actually because people think that if you work in a top tech company, you know, you're one of the smartest people in the world. You're the best developers out there. And that's not always the case. Um, a lot of people don't get the job at a top tech company is because they don't because they don't apply. You know, they don't put themselves out there because they're already thinking they're already defeating themselves before they even send out an application. They think that they'll never have the chance to work there. You know, they're not good enough and all things like that. But that's not true. You know, you don't have to be the best developer in the world to get a good job at one of these companies. You know, you just have to put yourself out there, you know, polish your resume, get some good experience behind you and be able to explain how be able to explain that you know what you're talking about. You can provide value. And that's pretty much it. I mean, I know a lot of times it's kind of hard to get your opportunity. So the best thing I would recommend is go to career fairs, go to the meet and greets. I know right now during these times, it's kind of hard to have in-person things, but they're, I know with Amazon, they're doing a lot of virtual meetings and virtual career fairs. So if you can get to one of those, if you're able to talk to a person you know, one-on-one rather than just submitting your resume through an automated system, you'll have a way better chance of actually getting through and being able to prove yourself. So don't give up, continue applying, and you know, you are good enough. You don't have to be some insane, you know, Silicon Valley engineer to get one of these companies. So that's the end of the video. Uh, There are some more questions I might make a part two, but if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. You can message me on Instagram. You can join my Discord. I'm gonna link all these below. There's a software channel in my Discord where you can ask questions and I can directly respond to them. But yeah, if you enjoyed this if you enjoyed this video and you found any value, please consider subscribing, liking the video, and I will be putting out more tech videos and more software engineering videos soon. Thank you.